Multiple sclerosis is a very common neurologic disorder in Canada. About 100,000 people are affected by it. It's an autoimmune problem where the immune system is damaging the myelin coating on ner nerves in the brain and spinal cord. That leads to symptoms of balance problems, uh, double vision, uh, loss of feeling in the body and actual loss of vision and it can be quite frightening to people when it occurs. You, you go through cycles, it's very cyclical. You, you can have major fatigue some days. You can you have those moments when you wake up and you still feel tired. Although you've already slept seven, eight hours, you still you wake up tired. And I've also got complete numbness on my, still have numbness on the right side of my body. When I first started talking about multiple sclerosis and genetic factors in multiple sclerosis, people thought I was a bit nuts. And it was a very hard battle because at that time, nobody thought that there was any genetic component to MS. But people did know that if you looked at families, you could have more than one person affected. I had just finished a study on siblings, in other words, brothers and sisters of people who had MS, and looking at how often they would also get MS. I got up to give my talk, I was a couple of minutes into it, and one of the older immunologists who was in charge of the meeting yelled from the front row, this is nonsense, genetics has nothing to do with MS, I'm giving you two more minutes and then we're taking our coffee break, wrap up. The database started with a grant from the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada in 1993. And it allowed us to collect DNA samples and family history information and clinical information and demographic information from all the established MS clinics across Canada. Many genes have been identified to have a role in multiple sclerosis, but their contribution to the disease is rather small. What we're trying to identify is one mutation of major effect that causes disease within families. We pull the DNA samples from the freezer and we sequence the entire coding genome from these patients to identify all the mutations that they had in their genes. Once we have found those mutations, we try to identify those that were exclusively in the patients and not in the healthy family members and not in the general population to find the mutations that actually cause the disease in these families. This mutation was identified in two families from Canada. And in these two families, 70% of the people who presented the mutation developed multiple sclerosis. This is the first time that we identified a mutation that actually causes a disease. When Carl first came with to me with these findings, I was very skeptical because I've been in this field so long and although we've had many families where MS seems to go from generation to generation, we've never been able to find a gene change that is specific to the cause of MS. And I have to say that I was sort of vindicated because I've been saying all these years that there may be some families where genetics are more important than in other families. And I've passed many decades with people almost laughing at me. I was actually a little proud of myself <laughs> that I stuck to my guns all these years. With the genetic mutation that we have identified, we can now create animal models which are, which are very likely to mirror the biological processes that cause disease in people. These models will be an outstanding tool for the development of new treatments which are likely to tackle the causes of disease rather than try to manage the clinical symptoms. We could even perhaps predict who may go on to develop MS and perhaps be able to do some treatment before MS hits the clinical stages. One of the challenges of treating neurologic diseases is that the disease becomes evident so late in the stage of the condition that it's beyond the point of treatment. We cannot predict who will get progressive MS currently. But with this new discovery, we can now, for some patients, predict who's at high risk and maybe with our very effective treatments, we can prevent those people from ever developing progressive disease. That would be a medical revolution to have that accomplished.